So looking at this problem, um, I can do this two different ways. I could transform the secant squared using my Pythagorean identity, or I could transform uh, my one minus sine squared. Now, I'm gonna transform the one minus sine squared simply for the fact of it's gonna make it simpler, right? If I was gonna transform it to the secant, I'm gonna get you know an expansion problem. And also, it's gonna not be using, I wanna keep everything in, um, I wanna keep everything smaller together. So what is one minus sine squared? Well, remember, you have to remember your identities. Right, so to find sine squared, I'll subtract the sine squared of x. And therefore I get cosine squared of x equals one minus sine squared of x, right? So let's plug, instead of writing that, let's write a simpler cosine for that. So I have secant squared of x times uh, cosine squared of x. Is everybody following? Paul? <coughs> So now, how can I rewrite one? How can I rewrite C, secant? Right. Think about your identities. You can write as what? One of the Absolutely. And why would I want to do that? Like, why could I write? You know, you could rewrite cosecant if you wanted to, but just you know, there's multiple ways to do this. But you got to just be thinking. If I can rewrite this as cosine squared of x times cosine squared of x, some magic is going to happen. And what's going to happen is. These are now going to cancel out, and our answer is going to equal 1. So even if it's like secant squared, you can still use straight identities as long as you square the cosine. Well, like, yeah, I mean, you can work it the other way if you want to. It all works out. Why not? 